Okay. That actually worked out okay. Um, I have an adjustment to the agenda key when you're ready. Uh, oh, there's three of us here. Yeah, so what do I do? I declare us out of executive session? Yes. At 6.15. And then I, any adjustments to the agenda? You had one, Cindy. I do. Um, we need to complete board organization by appointing reps to policy, negotiations, technology, and facilities committees. I already got that one. Well, then you're all set. I was going to make that 8.4 as an action item. <laughs> all right. Bob wanted, that one. <clears throat> wanted to confirm. I had on that. one other Did one. I guess I would like to well, add a new 7.4 <clears throat> to discuss the potential Charlotte Heinsberg resource collaboration and the memo that Cindy sent around. So have you already been appointed chair? Yes. You did it Monday and, night. Oh, you did it Monday night. That's right. Perfect. Any? <clears throat> Claire? Um, you also need to reaffirm all of this. Continue to be on the uh, lunch food service committee. Uh, Unless one of you wants of it. That's part of the committee assignments, right? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. I know that made the list. Have policy negotiations facility and others lunch. Okay. 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 You said policy negotiations, technology, and facilities, right? Technology. Good. <laughs> um, any other adjustments to the agenda? Audience and communication. Having none. Uh, I'm sorry, adjustment to the agenda. I guess we do we need to renumber the art presentation or just postpone it till seven? Postpone. We'll postpone. postpone. It. All right, so then uh, 6.0 reports to the board. And can I just um, um, make a note that we really want to get out on time? Yes, we really want to get out on time. Like, no over time. Like the art presentation should be kept to 20, 30 minutes. To 20 minutes. Would be nice. 20 minutes would be nice. Okay. I, sorry, I don't know where I was supposed to, maybe this was added to the agenda, but it seems like we, given the communications we've had to the board about the basketball and um, the gym, where is that? Well, first off, I want to thank Colleen for sending that email, but I have discussed the matter with a couple of them, and I propose that they write me an email, and I will try to put it on the April Okay, meeting thank you. As an agenda item, and invite them to come talk to us. Thank you. And in the meantime, they're, they're allowed to play basketball in the gym? I or, suppose. Is that... They've never been denied okay, permission just... to play there. The issue was having a custodian right. come during vacation because it's outside their normal working hours. Okay. All right. And did you, did I? Okay. Thank you. I'm good. Principal's report, 6.1. Um, unless you have well, let me just say something about number two, which is kindergarten registration. That'll occur at the end of this month. Our preliminary, if everybody shows up that we believe is going to show up, and I'll share that with you at our April meeting, we could be looking at a kindergarten class in the mid-60 range. So... But until they come and register, I'm not going to go beyond that on that one. Um, however, I'm going to let you ask me questions about this. Then I'm going to go to something at the bottom of this that you ready for me? Um, so the minute we do that, if and when we make that decision, 
um, then the next issue becomes space. Because if we go to four Ks, we're going to have 10 classrooms in the K2 wing, and we have nine classrooms. So um, we have another classroom in the 3 4 wing. So that's, that's okay. You know, I think we can get through next year without any bumps in the road. We've kind of, we've spoken with Kathy a little bit about white building, what next steps might be there. Um, I think I'd like you to start thinking about what happens. We're gonna be in that white building on a regular basis much sooner than I would have ever imagined two years ago. Um, and our birth rates in Heinsberg relative to what our actual registrations are is, is out of whack. Um, the birth, the actual births to Heinsberg folks is in the 40s. And, you know, when we were having our initial conversations around the white building before we did the primary wing renovation, we were thinking we were eight, ten years away from once we emptied it to having to go back into it. I, I, really, I really don't believe that's going to be the case for you. I really believe you're going to you're going to have space issues very quickly. And given, given what we just experienced in, in our annual meeting this week and how the community, rightly so, feels about increased costs, um, I think we're going to have to bond in order to renovate that that space in order to use it as as classroom space and we probably ought to begin to have conversations around how you might want to do that next step get serious about that probably in the fall and have that be part of the work plan for next year uh, that would be my advice to you. Just based, based on what I think is coming in the fall, and again, I'll have um, firmer numbers for you at our next meeting after we've actually held registration. We're doing a much better job with the child care providers in the community of tracking who's in the pipeline than we were um, when I first arrived and it's just got me nervous for us in terms of building capacity. So I've been thinking since our annual meeting that um, personally I don't know how we can add a kindergarten teacher. I don't, I, yeah. then our base next year is already up one position and and I know it's it would be horrible to have 21 22 kids in a kindergarten classroom but I don't know how we can add it so that's going to be your decision at the end of the day um, we had some pushbacks when we started working with those numbers at grade two you're gonna get a, my my two cents um, you're going to get a lot more pushback at the K level than you did at, at grade two or even grade one. Um, I just want to prepare you for that. Um, we can do whatever you direct me to do. Um, I'm just giving you the feedback from this one board member that um, I don't... I, <laughs> 
there's a community out there that's pretty unhappy with our budget increase, mm -hmm. and that would be just, we'd be starting off next year with our base already 70,000 added to it. So. Yeah, well, I, I'm not. I don't have a dog in the fight, okay? Um, but as a board, I understand that you're dealing with one segment of the population that's given you a very strong message. I'm trying to prepare you with an equally strong message coming from parents of those kids that are going to enter kindergarten, and you're all shut up. So, so Bob, say again, what, what do you, what's the anticipated number that you, where we are for kindergarten next year? Mid sixties. Mid sixties. Mid sixties, and and how, what's the what's how do we know that they've already registered? Because I've noticed signs up in the in school and stuff. So what's happening is parents are beginning to call to make appointments for that two day kindergarten registration. So we're coming up. We've already get received a couple of names that weren't even on our list, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and our list had 60 on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if everyone that's on the list shows up, plus the ones that we're hearing from that we didn't have on the list, mm -hmm. I'm anticipating you could be looking at mid-60s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can we? And in fairness. And that includes some children possibly who are beyond the September 1 birth date. Um, no. Oh. Not okay. of those are I on that have. List. I have one request for September birthday to come next year um, that falls outside the, the drop dead date, mm -hmm. but we, I've granted that to kids born in September before, so, you know, one kid right, right, right. isn't just... going to break us one way or the other, but that's just based on that. And until yeah. they show up and sign the registration form, I'm not going to worry about it. But I want to give you some time to think about it before you're put in a position of having to respond to it. Mm -hmm. And can you remind us again what the number that you thought was appropriate for when we would split them into four? Well, we, sp we split the current second grade into four Ks when they came. At what number was I that? I think that year it was 63. No, that's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking is, during this process, we have discussed how many kindergartners would be required in a class in order to make them four classes, not three. We, we've never... You've never had a firm number that you've said, when it hits this number, we're going to four. Do you have a number that you would recommend? Well, we've said 15 to 18 for that age group. And mid-60s would have 15 to 18 with four classrooms. It would have over 23. So another question I have is, um, um, Perhaps we might need some help with thinking about other possible models that maintain the number of faculty members that we have, but perhaps um, bring in tutors or, or something like that so that there, there are other adults participating in the space. But you know, maybe we can just think about what are the various yeah. options and, and yeah. help us think through that yeah. so that it's not a um, you know, so there might be a temporary one-year um, addressing of, of a particular population bubble, and then we deal with it after that. Yeah, and I think maybe the other the other thing that hopefully um, I would get a better handle on once we had more information about the group of kids themselves yeah. would be you know, what their need set is right, as an right. individual group, right. that might help us kind of sort through it and figure it out. Right. Um, sometimes even with a lesser number of kids, you've got to 
set of circumstances and challenges that would warrant you to do something different. And, and you're not going to know that until the end of March after they've done their pre-screening. Yeah, and it may screenings. be, you know, it may be May, you know, by the time we've gone through the orientation process and yeah. we've worked with the kids a little bit in order to get a better handle on what we've got in the group as a whole. You know, it may take a little while to figure that out. I may not have that yeah. for you in April. That may be a, uh, that may be a May conversation. Yeah. So yeah. we don't need to resolve it tonight. We just no. need to think about that that's Those there. were two things that I really wanted to put on the table with you early because I know it's going to be a challenge. On the parent group side, yeah. Thank unless you, you have yeah, any more ahead. questions, I I, I want to uh, voice agreement with Kathy about the challenge in the community of adding another teacher to staff. So I don't know if there's an ability to repurpose staff or examine that, but I'm really reluctant to support adding that much more to our baseline. Well, there's there's a I, we, we, we shouldn't get into it tonight, but there's a difference between adding to the baseline and, and a temporary solution that might be one year. So. <coughs> Moving on, 6.2, parent report. They held a uh, pancake breakfast our parent group did um, last Saturday, which was very well attended. And early reports have it that um, they made over $2,000 on the pancake breakfast. So not only was it at a nice community event, but it was also a nice fundraiser for, for the parent group. And they are doing their second second round of grants to the staff. And as I noted at um, the annual meeting, um, that parent group support has really been tremendous to uh, to the school, and um, it's really wonderful to to have that level of support. I think the, uh, I think the staff's appreciative of that and I'm hoping that we can continue to build that. As we move forward, can't find the right word to insert in there, but it's really, really been nice. And I know you're aware of that, um, yeah. but just wanted to note that. Questions, comments? 6.3 Facilities Committee, anything? Is that you, Kathy? Bob said it looks like we have some future work to do, but I did, we did, it seems like we lost track of the painting versus yeah, we're, we haven't lost track of it. Uh, we have and we haven't, Kathy, you're right. Um, we have $50,000 that that was part of the money that we got when we did the natural gas conversion to the boilers. When we went for that conversion money, we also put $50,000 in to paint the exterior of the white building. And as we looked at painting the envelope of the building, you know, the conversation started around, well, should we consider siding as opposed to um, just painting the building? Then we started thinking about, does it need insulation? So we had, an energy audit done to figure out where we were that way. Um, so as a result of that, that 50,000 is sitting there, 
and the way that money came to us, we have two years to spend it. So we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with it in the next, now it's in the next year. Um, I would think that the issue I raised with you a few moments ago will probably help us figure out what, what the next step really looks like. Uh, I was there, I was in the White Building yesterday subbing for uh, one of the staff members. And, you know, when we decided we were going to move out of there and put all the kids in the main building, we've really kind of let the White Building, we vacuum it, you know, we keep it clean so that we can use it and we use it in a marginal way at the moment. Um, but we've got window sills in there that just moisture, condensation, that it, it, when we go in there, it isn't, going, it isn't going to be just a cosmetic kind of an upgrade that we're going to end up doing, my guess is. Um, I hadn't had time to stand around and just look at it, and I had a little bit of time yesterday in this one room. I, I think if we took a butter knife to the windowsill, we could punch a hole in it without a whole lot of problems. So there's going to be some structural stuff that's going to have to be addressed. And, you know, the carpeting in there was, that's in really tough shape. So there are going to be flooring issues. Uh, we had issues um, ahead of time with uh, we were going to have to upgrade the, the fire alarm system in, in that building and I don't know what the elevator might require for work. So there, I don't think it's a ton of money, um, but there's going to be, it's going to be more than a paint job and a shampoo vacuuming to return those to classroom spaces. Bob, I think we did think that we needed to make a decision. If we looked at the exterior options. We couldn't afford the Cadillac. And the energy audit, I was amazed. This building you would think would be in total leaky, and it's not that bad. So it seemed like we could move ahead with the paint this summer. Like, that wouldn't be money poorly spent. And, and, and it's looking like... You know, the paint's looking like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> so I didn't, but I don't, maybe we can have a separate conversation. Yeah, I'd, I'd welcome, um, I'll speak to Bob and maybe we can get together and, because Bob and I spoke about it briefly recently and we both said we need to get back yeah. to it. Okay. And after uh, going in there uh, yesterday, there's no question. Reinforce that fact. Yeah. So I'll speak to Bob and we'll get something. Techno 6.4 Technology Committee. This was Paul's baby, Ruh -roh. so uh oh. I don't know if we have any report, anything that you guys have. I guess we'll just skip on and we will appoint a member of the Technology Committee later. Uh, discussion matters, 7.1 policy review. Cindy, do you guide us on this? I'd be happy. That would be great. Um, let's talk about them all in a whole rather than going one by one. You'll see that 7.11, which is job descriptions and staffing, and 7.13, volunteer work study students, and 7.16, um, public meeting, those are actually not in your packet. Those were the list of policies the policy committee looked at, not the ones we recommended the board discuss tonight. The ones that we're looking for input on, or if you turn to your packet, because I'm afraid to do this from memory, are I got that wrong. It's job description stuffing is in the packet. Um, we made, the committee made a couple of changes. Um, 
inserting a reference to permanent positions and changing references to from the superintendent to the administration and deleting paragraph three thinking that that was a duplication we're just looking for input to whoever your new or continuing rep is on the committee to bring back to the committee when they meet at the end of this month and that was the most significant change in that policy any thoughts feedback questions Okay, moving on to substitute teachers the minor change in that policy was to change the reference from local school boards to supervisory union board the supervisory union board took on management of subs for all the districts several years ago um, and they have traditionally set the rate so it's just a correction in procedure we pay the subs the same rate whether they're in Hinesburg CVU or Charlotte and we really don't want to start a process where we would pay different rates um, and unless the board wants to move coordination back to the local schools we would think that would make be a change it would make sense but we happy to hear input otherwise any questions on that policy not that I'm biased on that one <laughs> okay resolutions uh, again the only change in this policy is to remove a reference from the superintendent to the administration practical matter most resignations don't end up with the superintendent they end up with the principal in the building any questions about that one <laughs> Okay, moving right along, teacher supervision and evaluation. Um, this one is a little bit more, uh, was a little bit more of a discussion. Um, what we're trying to do is, well one, there's a discussion about whether you actually need a teacher supervision and evaluation policy since you actually have a very comprehensive teacher supervision evaluation system. But assuming that the boards did want to keep the policy, we tweaked the language in paragraph two trying to make it reflect the actual work that is done as a part of the supervision evaluation system which would be that we work with teachers to ensure their goals are linked to the broader school goals when they're setting their individual goals but there are times when teachers clearly would have individual goals that aren't related to action plans and then in paragraph three we removed the we took on a regular basis off and put it as requested um, those have occurred basically at the board's request in the past so seems to reflect practice and the committee at the moment is to put it kindly on hiatus um, we continue to adjust forms and paperwork to keep current with Danielson but we haven't had an overall supervision evaluation committee meeting in at least 18 months so and that was hampered during the negotiation process as you can imagine <laughs> and that's that policy any questions input um, Kathy and I were both on the committee we were both absent from that meeting <laughs> but one of the things that might be helpful just to add and I, I should have sent this to you is um, clarification of the composition of the supervision and evaluation committee And this is the time to do that. This is not untimely by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. So. And then, um, you know, just clarification of um, requesting, you know, how the request happens. Um, I think it would either be part of the work plan and the board goals set in the spring, so it was just put on the work plan if there was a report expected, or if at a board meeting you guys said, hey, we haven't heard on that, can we hear next month, either through the Colt report or uh -huh. a presentation and update so we might just want to add a, a phrase um, how would it be requested yeah okay okay anything else on policy nothing for you to adopt tonight no um that actually wasn't it was reviewed by the committee but there was no changes proposed and the last time you looked at it was a year ago so we didn't think we needed to look at it again <laughs> okay thank you thank you Cindy. you're welcome 7.2 communications discussion kathy thank you for writing that article on the citizen i did have a couple of uh constituents note their appreciation for it being in the paper and made what we did the other night a little bit more comprehensible. Yeah, I, 
I know it was a lot of work. It's a huge amount of work. Thank you. Um, a frustration that I've had over the last several years is the timing of the Heinsberg record. So at least with the citizen now, it's yeah. a little bit easier to get information out timely and, and feel like you didn't, oh, I missed the deadline, I gotta wait a month. Yeah. So that's certainly uh, nice. And I'm not advocating that we do something on a regular basis, certainly yeah. not weekly, but <coughs> excuse me, we might think about doing periodic things if we can think of topics to write about. But a, a thank you to the community. And this is our process through the next year. You know, we, we begin our planning for the budget now, yeah. immediately after digesting, you know, input that we heard, and this is our plan. And people can expect to uh, see notice for a public forum in the fall or whatever. And we may have a special meeting before then, who knows? Do you want me to take a stab at writing something? Personally, I would leave it alone. Because, yeah. I mean, some people, you, you could see it in their faces. They just were saddened. And I don't know that it's going to feel good to be thanked, you know? I mean, we, I, I would just give it some time to heal. Um, I mean, the, that second vote was really close. And, I don't know that they see a thank you in the paper, they're going to feel any better about it. It's just, but I would give it some time to heal. Yeah. But it just, I, I don't know why we wouldn't express appreciation for a really hard decision because it's really difficult to vote yes. And to lay out the process. I feel hinky. If you you feel that word. I feel hinky. I feel my skin crawl a little bit when different subject when the chief of police is advocating on front porch for him for the new police station. Then afterward, he writes a long thank you letter. Me personally, it just well, it, he's it, an it, employee. I understand, but it's still the select board should have done that. It still crosses some boundary in my mind. We're I not think, employees. I understand, but I just think. And just the way I feel, it just crosses some boundary. I think we went there, we presented the budget, they voted, like we all said thanks. And I, I just think um, they know the work that we do, they vote for us to be on the board to do their work. And I think it may sound a little bit almost disingenuous in a way, kind of a, to the people who didn't support the budget saying, we don't appreciate their point of view maybe a little bit. That's just how I feel. But it's laying, it's, you know, a lot of people came to the meeting, were appreciative of that. Absolutely. It's nice to have so many people participate in the discussion. The number of people who voted yes compared to the number of people who voted no means we have an approved budget. We can move forward with the planning of the school. That's really important. We're not asking our administrators to go back and figure out how to take who knows how many thousands of dollars out of it. We are able to move forward and we can lay out the process for the next year. So for those who want to get engaged, this is, this is where it happens. These are the places of entry into the conversation. I, you know, we have to, we have ownership of it. We're board members. We don't, you know, we get a $500 stipend a year. I don't know if you knew that, but um, we're not in, we're not employees and the work of the building is not self-serving us. It's we're in a role to support the community and we make the best decisions we can with the information that we have at hand. They're not perfect decisions and they're not gonna please everybody all the time. I don't know why we wouldn't acknowledge that two, over 200 people showed up at the annual meeting. That's a huge, that, that's a huge thing to happen in this community. That's great. Um, okay. No, I'm just looking for other board members' feedback. I don't know. Yeah, I, I 
have mixed feelings. I, I, I mean, I hear both of you. I think that um, it was really exciting to have that many people attend a meeting, and I'm glad that they came out. Um, I took a lot of phone calls before the meeting and um, encouraged people to come um, because I thought that, you know, I explained that they do have the power of the vote at that meeting. Um, so that was good. That was great democracy in action. Um, but I feel also that, you know, I think it's fine to put some, a piece in the paper to say that it was a diff very, very difficult budget for us to put out. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. Um, and we do appreciate that the community um, ultimately supported it, even if it seemed felt very much like a split vote. Um, but I also think the message that we heard our community and that we are working for our community, and I think we demonstrated that over the past five years, we made some um, really tough choices in years previously. Um, unfortunately, it didn't pan out this year that we could make those same, we could do, we could deliver the same kind of package that we've delivered the past five years. So, um, you know, I think it's okay to write something in the paper, and I do think that encouraging people to participate in the process from the beginning is really important because I do know that we often feel when we're sitting in those meetings facing empty chairs that nobody cares. I think. I definitely got the message that people care, and I, I, I knew that previously, but um, I will definitely carry that into the next budgeting process. So. Well, Ruth Ayer's com comment at the end was That wonderful. she cares about education. Yeah. And, I, mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing. I think that the Hinesburg community has been incredibly supportive of education. We've been really lucky. and. Um, and I don't think people are voting against the school. I think that they were voting their pocketbooks, which right now, for many, many people, are pretty empty. Which is all the more reason to acknowledge that there was a very difficult decision before right. the community. Right. And that's, and yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I, we shouldn't run away from it. I'm not sure I can craft that letter, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> I'd Looks be like happy Keith to can. work with Keith on Looks it. Like Keith Any can. volunteers <laughs> before I step up and do it then? I'd be happy to work with you on it. All right. I do think it's important. A, do you want to take a first draft run sure. or do you want to comment on my first draft? I, I'll let you choose to make that decision. Why don't you draft a first okay. draft and then I will comment on okay. it. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you. All right. Uh, 7.3 meeting debrief. We've kind of started that. But <laughs> So I'd like to say something that's hard to say, but I've, this was my third town meeting, um, and town or annual and school? school annual school meeting. The first one, you're so new, you don't know really what's going on, and you hope nobody asks you a question. Um, but I felt disempowered at this meeting because there was no opportunity for the rest of the school board members to answer questions, and I'm. I'm hoping we can look for a different model next year. Maybe um, Keith, you, could, you, I think the chair definitely has to kind of lead off, but maybe be a bit of a moderator so all of the <laughs> all of the school board um, gets a chance to respond because um, we all have we all speak in a slightly different manner, and it just it. It was kind of frustrating for me to sit there and not have any opportunity to speak or, and maybe we need to do a better job planning ahead of time. You know, we, we do all this work and then there's a whole month or more where there's, there's nothing. And then all of a sudden it's time to have the meeting and we aren't, you know, we aren't really very well planned for it. And so I, I, I just like to see if we can talk about a different way of doing it. You know, maybe I'm, off the mark and I don't know Bill you you know you, you're a newbie that first one uh, you, know, like, you don't you don't you just hope you don't have to speak because it's you're so new but I would add that um, I saw the information that was going to be presented sometime on Monday when I opened my email um, that that I and when I saw it I didn't necessarily like everything I saw and didn't 
but I had no opportunity to give input to that. Um, so it felt very last minute. Um, and then there was a call to arrive at 6.30. I actually arrived a little bit earlier than that because I thought we were gonna have a chance to give some input on what was being presented and that we did our, our organization meeting and then people just moved into their roles that were already predetermined that I didn't have any input. I'm not sure Kathy had any input in how that was gonna work. So it felt like, as a board, it did not feel like I was presenting that budget and making that presentation. It was, it felt like, as Kathy just said, we ended a process and then it was presented. And I was reminded that this was our budget to present um, by the board. And I agree with Kathy. I think I've been at five meetings and I think I've spoken once to answer a question that nobody else knew the answer to. So, um, yeah, it doesn't feel, I, I, I agree. I think it should be more of a, more of a board presentation yeah. and particularly this year. Well, I'm open to suggestions on how we get more participation. I had invited any and all participation needed and I had tried to include people in answering any questions that wanted to if people made a move to do that. But if I didn't see a move to do that, then I took initiative to either answer it or to ask the administrators to answer it. On the slides, I, I personally appreciate the slides that Central Office puts together, but I don't like them very much. Mm -hmm. I think they need a lot of improvement. And this year, I didn't think they were sufficient standing on their own. Mm -hmm. So Bob Goodrow and I talked about trying to give a little bit more background on the process that we've been engaged in for the last few years. And the basis for what he used was, I think, the slides from our budget forum back in October. Um, so I didn't feel that they were out of bounds from what we had already used as a board and, and seen. If we can, and then one thing, that takeaway I had, if we can remember next year to put something about either the kneecaps or that was such a strong message, so how are we doing? And we had the information, yep. we just didn't have it with us. And, it, and we I had actually, this great- I actually had it right sitting right in my this, folder and I didn't realize. <laughs> you know, I think it was great when Jeff O'Hara brought up the fact that the eighth grade class, right. you know, that was so great. We could have, and of course we are we're focused on the budget, but um, if we can all try to remember that for next year. It'll be a nice, nice addition. It might make it easier to pass the budget if people are hearing the, the numbers. Are well, <clears throat> you know, one thing that we used to do that we should consider for next year is we used to, um, and Lisa, I seem to remember you being at some of these, we used to have a dry run of the presentation and go through, okay, this is this we is did. the presentation and just do a dress rehearsal. We did. And yeah. then we would come up among ourselves, these are the questions that will likely come up. Oh, okay, we've got a hole here. And I think we should do that next year is make sure that we do a dress rehearsal, did. which yeah, is essentially yeah. the forum. Did that take place because the regularly scheduled meeting was always the week before the annual meeting? Um, we just made sure, you know, we did it for at least 10 years on the board. You know, probably more. We just always did it that way, and then we stopped doing it a couple years ago. And, and I think what, um, what happens when we do that dry run is that the authorship feels more like us mm -hmm. because we're telling our story. And central office, um, they do a, a fabulous job of pulling everything together, but some of the nuances that we know because we're local that we want to make sure that get put in there, then we own it, then it's our responsibility. I do think you're right though, Keith, in the past, in the recent past, we always had, we had our meeting the first week yep. of the month. Um, and so we had that opportunity to once again review it. That's when we would do our reorganization. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had suggested that we meet before, 15 minutes before the meeting, and the week had, before we should meet. Right, we definitely or should. Or even not that. We have to. We have to remember that that meeting is really important, and that's we're putting on a presentation, and for everybody to be involved, we have to have it's even a if, show. Yeah, we have to have some kind of uh, a special meeting or something to even if it's an happen. extra meeting in our schedule, even right. though everyone's exhausted, we. As a board, I think we need to go through that dress rehearsal. And right. not a month ahead. 
No, no, no. I think it has to be right before. I mean, within days before. I'm, I'm thinking, I got a comment and a question. I'm thinking about the select board meetings, the select board, the town meeting. And just, for instance, it seems like when John's up there, certain members of the select board have a certain area of expertise of the budget and he defers to them. So that's maybe something we can keep in mind next year, too. I don't know how we would parse that out, but. Well, we've done that. Bill, you, the past you study is... this part, and this is your, 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 your part. That might be a good thing to do. Yeah, like, you know. You own facilities, right, right, you own the right. fund balance, right. you own whatever, and we just pass it out that way. But I think we all own the budget. I agree. And I think that that's... I, and I but that might give everyone a voice, though, during the, right. during the meeting. Yeah. The other thing I was curious about is, to my way of thinking, and I don't know how this process would change, Paul Lamberson should have been sitting there instead <laughs> of me. Not Paul didn't have to be the chair, but Paul's the one who voted for the budget. I didn't vote for the budget. It's just the, the fluky That's, way it works. Yeah. Well, well, I, I we'd, ha we'd have yeah. to we'd have to change the time of our meeting to right before town meeting. Yeah. Well, just just uh, it, Ruth actually aired actually made a yeah. comment to me yeah, back when I was on was the other way is that the outgoing person sat and then the the new person so I wouldn't have sat up there till next year. But you know it, that hasn't happened in more than twenty years. It makes more common sense to me. Yeah. Someone asked me a question, what am I going to say? Even if they ask me. Bill, whether I did or not support this budget, Bill, do you support this budget? Yeah. You know, I couldn't say yes, I voted for it, or no, I didn't, because I. No, couldn't. no, you're right. So I don't, I don't know if that's something the board so, wanted to look into changing. Uh, yeah. So whoever's going off the board doesn't get off the hook. <laughs> or maybe could we write? Could we can on the board until after the meeting, or could you? Well, no, that's, but we can. So you can, you can make whoever you, your presentation. You can bring to that forum whomever you want. Just well, the thing of it is, I mean, you know, technically, you have a new vote, but you're, um, I mean, you can vote somebody in, and they they start the next, the, you know, say that the um, the next, whatever, uh, your term starts the day after the town meeting, or, or maybe the night of the town meeting, in or, or the day after. I mean. I no, why not? No, we do it for town meeting. And we do it legis. We do it with legis. You know, you elect somebody. They don't start the next day. But yeah, for might, every other office in the world. I don't know what the law is, but I think that I think the law is that you become as soon as you take the oath when you're expected. So you have to take the oath the day after oh, the town Missy. meeting. Oh, that's Missy. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, Missy. I'm just saying. And, and it, I'm not as the chair. We should have that conversation if we're clarifying anything. Um, do we have a presentation? Yeah, we couldn't have that conversation. But. Oh, are they waiting for us to call them in or something? Yes. Oh, God. No, we don't the want to wait. The chair facilitates this meeting. not in charge of us. That's got to be clear. Did we adopt a region panel? Is it on the... It is. Is it, is it in there? What did you say? The calendar is in there? The calendar is here. Yeah, I got it. Are we adopting that tonight? Are we going to be able to finish the calendar, calendar tonight? Yeah. It's an action item. We're going to be able to finish by 7:30. I don't know. Do you have a copy? Does anybody have a copy of the calendar? I, I never got that. I never head. got that. Okay. Um, this is document. Yeah. This is not the actual calendar. Can I see the document? Yes, I never got the calendar. The I never got the document. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. So, so moved. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is this isn't even. A, this doesn't have our. Um, oh. Yeah, I couldn't figure out why there wasn't teacher service days and all that stuff. So. Why is it 175 days and not 175 days? I thought it was cheap. All right, so we are finishing 7.3 and we're going back to 5.0, 5.1, the art presentation. But we do have several other things we have to take care of before 7.30. So let's see what we can do. So we should make it quick. We can do quick. We, we, can, do we, we can do paper mache today, in 40 minutes with cleanup. <laughs> so we can do that. Yeah. Um, folks, for those of you, I know you all know these people. Katie O'Brien, Andy Tagliamonte, uh, our art staff at Heinsberg Community School. And um, I'm just going to turn it over to them. Okay. You want me to hand out some stuff? Uh, sure. 
Sure. These are handouts? That's handouts. Um, what I'm handing out to you is basically explains our art program. The, on the first page, you'll see um, what we hand out to the teachers, like the first month of school. And on that, they give us their things. And if you turn to page two, uh, I turn them all into a chart. Got a little bit of that left brain thing going too, um, where we scope out all the themes for all the classes for the whole year. The ones that are circled are where we've actually integrated with those classes and those themes. So you can see it's, it's quite a bit. Um, middle school isn't on there because we have them by the trimester. And so it's kind of a little bit more difficult to integrate with them. Um, the next pages just show you how we assess the older kids when we give them a project. Um, you know, like we, we did an art history project and they take notes on different artists and then they fill out assessment sheets. With the younger kids, when we assess them, it's basically just verbal and the classes are very short, so that. I love seeing a school like this and you can see the art. It's kind of well, it, it, it's helpful and, and once I make that, I hand that to the PE teachers, the music teachers, and the librarians so that we all are on the same page with things. So. And it's, yeah, it's helpful for us too, and myself as a new teacher, um, Katie and I don't have a lot of overlap time, so we both can kind of be on the same page of where integration, what stuff we can work together on, what other stuff that, um, that the classroom teachers are integrating. So it's a great way to um, just kind of coordinate together. Right. So are you ready? Is yes. It, I don't know if we can talk for a second. Sorry, it's loading. Okay. Um, I do have a box of the projects that the different grade levels have worked on. Um, one thing I did want to mention is we just submitted our entry for the recycle competition at the Burlington Free Press. Some middle school kids got together and we showed how we recycled books that were being thrown away from the library into pieces of artwork. So they're all on the video and just keep your fingers crossed on uh, Earth Day that Hinesburg Community School wins that competition. <laughs> But you can see, I just basically gave them all kinds of recyclable materials, and they went to town. Cool. And this this was seventh and eighth grade who did that. Very magical. Yeah. Yes. Should I just keep going? Yeah, so please. Please. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Can, can, so sure. can you tell us, um, particularly for the middle school, what's how, how often do they see, I know in the younger, can you tell us what the schedule is? Sure, them? sure. Um, K through um, five um, gets art 40 minutes once a week. Okay. Which is not a lot. And right. they're always stopping me in the hall saying, how come we can't have art twice a week? Which, you know, it's just, yeah. it's, it hasn't happened in 24 years, so it's probably not going to happen. Um, sixth graders get it twice a week for a trimester, which is 13 weeks, for 40 minutes. And middle school get it three times a week um, for 40 minutes for they do? one trimester. Oh, for one trimester. For one trimester. Okay. Yeah. And then not the rest of the year. They don't get it for the rest of the year. Sixth grade, too. Yeah. It's a harsh Yeah. And, and the, the drawback <laughs> is, like, we just did the University Mall art show, which is five through eight. And like two thirds of the kids didn't have any work in it because they didn't have art at the right time. So, so that, and it, that's a scheduling piece. I mean, it, it, it is. It. Yeah. I mean, they used to have it once a week for the whole year. Yeah. And it just. I think they were being pulled from classes, like so many extra minutes that this was the only solution to so the schedule. So you part. You have part of the kids one trimester. Part of the kids. Yeah. And, and basically, um, like with our schedules, we get a different grade level every 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And 
that's one of our challenges is going from having an eighth grade class to a second grade class and a third grade and a fifth and a kindergarten, which was my afternoon. And it, it's really tricky if, I mean, we love doing the messy things. And we're seeing more and more that teachers at the end of the school year are just dumping their art materials in the art room because they don't have time to do art. So I, I kind of like to keep things Messy. Yeah, we like to do the messy things, so that's kind of a quick change that you have to do between classes. Um, you know, I think the students, it does make it hard, but you know, like my eighth grade students, if I tell them my first grade's coming in, you know, that's like, that's responsibility for them as well, to know that they need to be in charge of themselves because they're, um, you know, a role model for other kids in the school. So I'm all set with my okay. computer, computing thing. So I just did a little, hopefully that will do that. Yes. Um, so I use the Prezi, which is a presentation tool that I use in the classroom as well. Um, and it just has some images of um, students and some of the things that we do. There it is. Maybe one line. Can everyone see that okay? Oh, sure. Ooh. Yeah, that's good. That works. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, art educators at Heisberg Community School, uh, Katie O'Brien and myself, I teach visual art on Mondays, and Katie is Tuesday through Friday. Um, Katie and I share the middle school students, um, so I, and well, for sixth and eighth grade. So that they, when they have art, uh, a couple of times, a few times a week, we share those students. What does art class look like at Heinsberg Community School? These are sixth grade students working on a stop motion animation project with their fancy new iPads. Um, they used a, a free app called iMotion HD and Claytune um, modeling clay, and they had a blast. That was a great project. First grader working on collage. A very proud kindergartner with her collage. This is uh, integrated with this, the Snowy Day, the book by Ezra Jack, Jack Keats. They were, they did painted paper and then did collage for their own snowy scene. Paper mache, the messy projects. <laughs> Painting masks. Um, those are masks for uh, Dios de los Muertos, and then uh, Katie also does a project integrated with the book characters for masks. It's a first grade class. They're working on their Dr. Seuss characters, so we read um, one of Dr. Seuss's books and they had to come up with their own Dr. Seuss character that had um, a name, one fact, and one, what was the last thing that they needed? I'm blanking. Oh, like one, oh, uh, it's like what it likes to eat. Yes, like what it likes to eat or a, uh, a prop. Yeah, well a prop, thank you. It's, yes. it's, I love that one. Yeah, that's a great project. So there was one, there's one that comes up after that. So visual art at Heinsberg, we foster creativity through materials, mediums, and techniques. Um, to promote a deeper understanding of classroom units through the integrated art projects. We build critical thinking and problem solving skills by challenging students to solve visual problems. That's one of the wonderful things about the arts. And then our curriculum aligns with both the Vermont and the national art standards. And so this is some of the, the literacy that we do at the younger levels with the snowy day. You know, some of the vocabulary that they have to choose, what they're going to put in their collage, how they're going to make it their own. There's the Dr. Seuss pets. This is one of my favorites. My pet's name is Chomper. He likes to eat burnt cookies before bedtime. There is a lot of creativity going into that. So. And at the older grades, um, as we showed you, opportunities for, whoa, whoa, sorry. That's Prezi being very, okay. 
<laughs> uh, provides opportunities for writing through self-evaluations, reflections, artist statements at the older grades. Um, and if we have time, this is the stop motion animation. It's about three minutes. Do we have time to watch what the sixth grade has done? Three you think? It's about sure. three minutes. Or we can watch half of it. Half of it will give you an idea. I'm sorry, the speakers in this room are not working, so you, you might. It doesn't have, it has music, but no. So they work together in groups to create little stop motion <laughs> animations with their iPads. Can you imagine two boys wrote that? Yeah. Yeah, how did you get? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, this is. <laughs> <laughs> they have to have so much fun with them. Yeah, so they have to build a set. They have they they're working in groups. There's a lot kind of going on with that. Also, the clay tune, clay is a it's it's not the easiest clay to work with because it doesn't it doesn't dry. So they had to you know work with toothpicks or assemble them. And they're doing frame by frame here. This one has a scene change, which I love. Oh, there we go, scene change. <laughs> That's great. Seamless. <laughs> oh, a little short one here. <laughs> I don't know who this. I think it's too far. So the kids had a great time with this because they got to use their iPads in a different way, um, you know, for something more creative, um, but still, you know, using the iPad um, for learning. And creativity. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a little the worm at the end. Ah. Okay. So that gives you. Oh, okay. Sorry, we have to watch this one. This one's very good. No, no, we'll be done. We'll be done. The great thing about this is when students were able to watch each other's videos, they were able to ask questions like, oh, well, how did you pull a carrot out of the ground? Or how did you do this? How did you do that? So it was really, really great. Um, okay. And so we were just going to show some more of the art projects that we had. Um, so, show, um, okay. so these are just a few of the Dr. Seuss we looked at Dr. Seuss books and they came up with their own crazy That's tests great. and That's something great. about them. I love having the artwork on the walls in the school. It just, it, yeah. it, it, it just makes me smile every constant. time I walk down the hallway. My kids make me stop and look at theirs every time we walk by. So, <laughs> Daddy, let me show you mine. Let me and show you, know, you mine. It, I'm just beginning to realize there's like 120 first and second graders, so I'm like really looking for extra spots. We were trying spots. to figure out space, yeah, that was, there's a, quite a few of them. Now first and second graders also did Colonial America and quilting, so we integrated that into one of our projects. And then kindergarten, who was, this was a texture, color mixing, Vincent Van Gogh inspired piece. And these were some of our stars in our recycle video. Because we have NRG brings over um, recycled materials. And we also have some from the medical center. So here's another Vincent Van Gogh inspired. This is first grade. And sixth graders um, do world cultures. So we've done some Amate paintings from Mexico. We did metal embossing. And we try and change the medium like for every project so that if we have a kid who is not really strong at drawing, they know that clay is right around the corner. So we can entice them. Um, middle school works with sand paintings. So 
some of this is just coming out of the University Mall Arch. Oh. And, let's see. and um, fifth graders are studying um, westward expansion and patterns in nature. So we worked with them. Katie, you might want to make sure that you oh. the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And then we did a big art history project, which um, with that one I introduced 10 different artists. The kids took notes on each one. They had to learn about their styles, and then they came up with one image of their own, and they picked five out of 10 of the artists and copied the style of those five. And they did an amazing job. Wow, those they are really those are great. <laughs> Some talented kids. Oh, they are. Yeah, they really are. So that's all I have in my box. Um, so some of other projects um, integrated lesson with um, the book The Mittens, which I do in um, kindergarten. So kids were um, made their own mittens, added added fabric and then we're stitching them and then made their own little animals that live inside the mittens just like the story. Um, let's see. Oh. Fourth grade is doing Vermont. So we're studying about Vermont. So we have some Vermont landscapes. So they looked at images and learned about background, middle ground, and foreground. fourth grade and then wrote their own artist statements. This student did not like their artwork. This is a beautiful piece. So that's a lot of what we do in the art room too, is building self-esteem around. Your artwork is wonderful. And if it's not, just keep, you know, keep working at what, what you want it to look like. Uh, and then at the middle level, um, we have a new project. We did clay robots containers inspired by the um, Time Machine exhibit that was at the Shelburne Museum. Um, John Brickles, who's a local artist, was in that. And he makes these fabulous robots, not as colorful. Oh, here's another one. It's a great clay robot. So students uh, in the eighth grade class are learning about how to build a hand-built container. So it's slab built, it's not thrown on a wheel. And then how to you know, add um, different bits of clay to make it look like the image that you want. And also at eighth grade, they did paper mache self portraits. So there's one paper mache. So they had to build a wire armature and then um, cover it with tape and then cover it with paper mache and then add color. So that's a lot of, quite a lot of steps. Um, there's another one. Someone did a portrait of themselves at, at the piano. Mm -hmm. so that's so all the goodies that I have. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Do you have anything? I think we're. I think we're, we're there. Are we there? See, we, we did covered, it. We covered everything. Seven twenty-five. Do you have any questions for us? It's fantastic. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful kids. Oh yes. <laughs> They're all into it, so that that's, that's helpful. Good. Okay. Well, the videos—they all look so happy. Oh, yeah. Kids are happy. Well, we, we make them smile. They don't. <laughs> They're in the hallway. That's a really good note. I'll say my kids love art class. That's all I hear about is when, oh, could we have art today? <coughs> oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so. That's Thank what we you. like, too. Yeah. You're very welcome. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, I know the kids can do that, but we can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you came to our classes, you could. <laughs> Can you get okay. her? Do you need help? No, this is, it's not heavy. Okay. It's just big. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, so we had left off finishing 7.3. Uh, there is a 7.4, which I added, but I'm going to take that off, and we'll talk about it next time. So then 8.0, Action Made Matters. 8.1, Adopt Regional Calendar. Cindy, are you going to give us some guidance sure. on this? The regional calendar is the calendar provided and um, approved by the local superintendents. This is really just a pro forma approval. This is the 175 core days that all of Chittenden County has to have. The next time we come to you will be the, the fun one. So, so can I ask you a quick question? 
this has school closing on June 9th. Is that our intention to close on June 9th next year? I don't know that off the top of my head. What I know is that's what the core 175 student days are, where the additional five days. So we have we five have. more days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. We did that last week, but I don't remember. I just, I, <laughs> it seems really early. And I, yeah, it seems about it three or four early. days early. Yeah, we have five days. Yeah, early. that's, yeah. All right. So do we need, we need a motion to act upon this? A move that we accept this calendar or support this calendar adopt. or whatever we adopt this calendar. A second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we will move on to 8.2, firm code of conduct. Do we want to do this or do Let's we want to leave it till the it. next one? Can we table this? Yeah. All right. Postpone. Post postpone till the next meeting. Um, 8.3 personnel, uh, apparently some requests for leaves of absence, 8.31 and 8.32. Uh, do we need to do this in open session or executive session? Um, only if there's specific questions that we require us to go personal into executive session so we can do the rest in open. Does anybody have questions about them? Bob, do you have anything to say in favor of I would as background? I would recommend that we include these. Um, I'll make an, a motion to approve the uh, recommendations as presented by the administration. Can I, can I have a, a time out? I, I believe I only saw one. I and think I'm I hearing only two. Saw one too. Yeah, there are two. You okay. did see one, and uh, um, the other one came later. Um, you I didn't see the second one. I would want to vote as if I had this one. That's the one that I have, Bob. The other one is triple E. I didn't see it. I have only saw the, the uh, older grade. Do you need us to act on a, the triple E one tonight? You can hold off on both of them if you want, as far as I'm concerned. What There's is not a your pleasure. There's no yank on my end. Okay. I'd prefer to see what the second one is before I vote on the second one. I'm happy to vote on this one, but I don't care. You have, I mean, you have an open motion on the table, just so you know. No one ever seconded it. Yeah, okay. So we might need As the minute we, we, <laughs> might, we might have to withdraw that and have a new motion. Okay, just checking. I move that we table these till the next. Um, Postpone. If you table, you have to vote to, to put it back on. I apologize postpone. that I haven't used the proper language. I would no. like to postpone it to our next meeting. Both of them or just? Let's do both of them next meeting. Second for that motion. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you. Um, 8.4 committee assignments. I think we need to do this one. Uh, we need to appoint one person to the policy committee, one person to negotiations, two to facilities, lunch. Do we need anyone in addition to Paul? No. And technology, we need one. So I think, can, can we, we do it sort this? of as a slate? You don't, uh, yeah, I think you can do a slate. Can, can we I would like to this? postpone this to the we next meeting. We don't have meeting. Kathy here. We don't have we Kathy really here. Need. We want to talk about what we want to do. We can. We can postpone Cindy, do you need an answer on these before April 10th? I would I would prefer policy and it would be helpful to negotiations if we knew sooner than later, but... Well, I'm happy. We've already talked about negotiations. Are we okay going forward? No, no. I think... I Yeah, I, I don't think we had a real conversation about negotiations. Okay. And who... Kathy is our existing policy person? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can we have her carry over at least if, yeah, for any we... policy meetings that are held in the interim? Sure. I'll just say current assignments until can reorg because that covers everything. Yeah, if that works for everybody. Yeah. So um, Paul's still on the thing on technology. We'll let him yeah. know. <laughs> 
All right, 9.0 consent agenda, a motion to approve. Do we need to do these separate or at all included? Consent's consent. one action. So a motion to approve what's on the consent agenda. Uh, so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing no objections, we've done that. Uh, director's comments, anyone? I just like to say thank you to Bob Goodrow and our central office administration for all of the hard work that went into bringing a budget together. I know the number of hours and the amount of energy it took. I would echo that. I would note that we got uh, an invitation from the VSBA for a workshop on the evening of March 28th in St. Albans, if anyone's interested in going to that to learn more about board work. Um, question for Cindy, is there going to be new board member orientation for the SU new board members? Yes. We'll make sure okay. Motion to adjourn. Uh, do we need to confirm the meeting date so we're good with them? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned at 732.